This is Kankul Faith Assembly with Pastor Gospel Edo, a man of God loaded with messages that are targeted at reaching minds and with the mandate of liberating people from all forms of frustrations and oppression. Heavenly Father, we really thank you for this day. Oh Lord, this is a continuation of the message you gave us last week. I will pray you will strengthen us. I will be able to pray correctly. Father, thank you for prayer and answer. Jesus may we pray. Amen. A bigger amen. amen. A bigger amen. amen. I want, last week we said talk something about types of prayer or prayer type and how to pray correctly. You remember? Prayer types and how to pray correctly. Which we were talking about different kinds of prayers. Every kind of prayer desire the way the prayer should be prayed. I know it's in the center of them. I don't put it. But every drink with the kind of cup, I think there's this proverb that I use about every drink with the kind of cup that we use in serving the drink. Am I right? Every kind of prayer deserves the technique of that prayer. And so last week we talk about when you discover that you, your problem are orchestrated by sin. You go back alone to talk to God, just like Jacob did at Jabbok. You remember that was all we said. You remember? And when you see that your problem is as a result of oppression, serious oppression that is upon you, that you have been oppressed unnecessarily, and all your life problems are because of oppression, we said that you have to go into fasting, possibly dry fasting. You remember? And we say that if your problem are caused by that kind of exchange of destiny, somebody has changed your destiny, and you observe that your destiny has been on exchange, you go into all night prayers. And we say again that if your problem are occasional and you think that there's no oh, cases, and that cases and Lineage issue is working against you. You go into warfare. You remember? But today we want to look at another angle. Prayer type and how to pray correctly part two. We want to take our text from Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. Verse 9 to 18. Exodus chapter 19. Verse 9 to 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in the thick cloud, that the people may hear what hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up unto the mount. Or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. They shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beasts or men. He shall not sleep when the trumpet sounds long. They shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people. And sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightning, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the later part 
of the mount. Verse 16. And Mount Sinai was all together on the smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quaked greatly. Praise the Lord. Let's stop here. See, the extraordinary appearance of God's glory before the children of Israel in Mount Sinai was an evidence that God was among them. And that God's presence is announced or heralded by his great power. Listen, you experience the event in Mount Sinai. I God told Moses, sanctify the people, let them wash their clothes, let them make boundaries and not exceed the same boundaries. But I'm going to come on the third day. And when I speak with you, they all will hear, and they will fear you. That was the pattern of the Old Testament. To pray for the power and the presence of God, there are certain things that are demanded that needed. When God came down on Mount Sinai, He was telling them, "This is Me, God Almighty, the power that you have not seen with your eyes." The way to experience the power of God is through the manifestation of the power of God. In the New Testament, you might not hear thunder and lightning and thick clouds of smoke and stuff. But when the Holy Ghost comes upon the people of God, the manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit will be sufficient evidence. And when in Acts of Apostles chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and the people were assembled in one place, and suddenly there came a rushing mighty wind. And the global tongues of fire descended upon the people. That is to tell you that the manifestation of the power of God, the Spirit of God, is what tells you that the power of God is in motion. That is why he said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What we are saying is that we are going to think about to pray for power. We are talking of types of prayer and prayer types and how to pray correctly. When you are praying for the power of God, there are certain things that are needed to be done to make you acquire the power of God. Because this season, somebody here, you are acquiring the power of God in Jesus' name. And there's something God told Moses. He says, sanctify the people. How do you sanctify people? He says, separate them. Please, let it be known to you that if you want to manifest the power of God, you must sanctify yourself. You must separate yourself from the worldly activities. If you are the type that used to go for funeral ceremonies, you to go birthday parties, you to go for any kind of ceremony. This season that you need the power of God, you sanctify yourself. To so sanctify yourself means that withdraw, separate yourself from all worldly activities. That is to say, anything that will distract you separate yourself from it. And God told them, whether in Old Testament or in New Testament, if you want to pray for the power of God as we are going to pray, you must separate yourself from the things that will make you to be worldly. You must separate yourself from all worldly activities. And anything that will distract, you know, sometimes if you are sincere to yourself, you will know that you are distracted here with the people of the world during ceremonies. They will make unnecessary jokes that will make you to be distracted from the cause of holiness. And so, when you want to pray for the power of God, we are talking about prayer time. When you want to pray for the power of God, number one, sacrifice yourself. That is to say, separate yourself from the world. In that season, Separate yourself from the world. Number two, he said, wash your clothes. He told them to wash their clothes. He said, wash your clothes. The same thing applies to us, you know, among the Jews. The Old Testament, as a matter of fact, their unholiness was a concentration on the actual appearance. The clothes was something you can see visibly. Am I right? That was their type of holiness. And so God told them, wash your clothes. That if you are coming, if your clothes is stained, people will know. Am I right? He said, wash your clothes. But for us, our consecration is in the heart. What that one means is that consecrate yourself 
and delete anything that we make your affection to be tinted into the things that are not visible for the physical eye. Remove them from your eyes. Wash your clothes. Means that you should, as a matter of fact, look around this. Ten. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Let them wash their clothes. To wash your clothes means that you should purge yourself of all impure thoughts, habits, affections, imagination. And all heart related issues that can define you. You know, let me tell you something. The definement of a man is from the heart. The thoughts that you think, all the affections that are in your mind, all the lusts that are in your mind. So, when God was saying that you should wash your clothes in our generation in the New Testament, it's not talking about physical clothes, it's talking about purging yourself of thoughts. Of imaginations, of affections that can define the mind. Hello. All the thoughts, all the imaginations, all the affections that can define you. So purge yourself of them. Purge yourself. That is wash your clothes. Why? Sanctify yourself. Is separating yourself from worldly activities. Not going to parties as you are going to parties. Not going to associate yourself with people anyhow. You don't want to make you feel distracted. The work of washing your clothes has to do with purging yourself of the thoughts that are not in consonant with the word of God. If you can be very faithful, you tell me. Sometimes you think very badly. Am I right? A lot of thoughts come into your mind. Purge yourself of those thoughts. And those thoughts will be purged up in Jesus' name. You send bounds onto yourself. You see? He said, let them not touch the mountain, the foot of the mountain. He told them there's a circumference. Don't touch the foot of the Don't tell them to go near the mountain. He told them, don't go near the mountain. Set yourself outside. Set bounds. He said, even an animal should not go near the mountain. An animal should not is anyone that goes near it will die. Will be stoned to death. Don't go near the mountain. That was a physical mountain. But at other times, it can go near the mountain. But because he was concentrating for power and the coming of the Lord and anointing and the Lord of God, he said, don't go near the mountain. What does it mean? Set some personal self-restriction to yourself. Don't eat too much in that season. Normally, food is good. Do not engage in legitimate activities that are not seen. Let's separate from some of them. He put on them. He said, Come not near your wives. He said, Don't go near your wife. And that's easy. Look at how they put it in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a long time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer. And come together again that Satan tell you not for your incontinency. Even in New Testament, when you want to engage in the spiritual activity that will attract the power of God, come not near your wives. But some people will say, Is it not a legitimate marriage? Marriage? Why will you stop me from coming together with my wife or my husband? In the time you are seeking the power of God. In the time you want power, God to come down. He said, Come not near your. This is then, I'm not in Old Testament and New Testament. Look, let me back it from verse 4 of this first Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. See, the wife had no power of her own on her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband had no power of her own body, but the wife. Defrauding not one another, except it be with concept for a time. That ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again. That Satan tell you not for your Listen to me. 
power of God, God will not come by accident. Are you listening to me? Even if God, even if God anointed you from the womb, if you don't do anything to activate the power of the anointing from the womb, you will remain the same place every year, every time. And what we are telling you is that to pray for the power of God, the type of prayer that brings the power of God upon the life of the believer, you have to, number one, be separated from the world. Number two, push yourself of every evil thought and evil imagination. Then, the three, set boundaries. It's not everywhere you go. It's not everything you do. Let nobody deceive you. It's not everything you do. It's not everywhere you go. Even the legitimate business you are doing, put it on first. Listen to me. You are a businessman. But the minute you want to seek the power of God, forget about that business first. I told you this other day we are going to have a program here. For the power of the Lord to come upon people individually. For the gift of the Spirit. And when it's good, Moses told them, he said, one, two days, consecration day, third day I will come. Thursday, Friday, consecration day, Saturday, God will come. Did you hear me? I'm telling you that the prayer for power requires your consecration. You can't live like every other man and be filled with the power of God. Forget it. Let nobody deceive you. You can't be like every other man you manifest the power of God. This is fake power. You must be withdrawn from the world. You must purge yourself of impurity. And you must set boundaries to yourself. You don't go anywhere they go. You don't do everything they do. If anybody is doing everything other people do, and is manifesting the power of God, tell him more that that's the power of God. That is fake power. And let me shock you. Let me shock you. If you are here, and if God tells me to anoint you to see, God tells me to anoint you to do miracles, and you don't grow into the realm of that grace, even if the power comes upon you, in few times the power will go away. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Even God says, anoint him, or I go to the most anointed man in the world and he anoints me. And if I don't follow the due process of prison and consecrating for the anointing to flow and be in the realm, because every anointing has a realm, and I'm not in the realm of that anointing, the power will flow away and I will go back to the same. Now, that is the reason why it's not many people, when they started to say, they will tell you, in those days, in those days, I will preach, I will do They didn't, we were not in the realm. God put them in the realm, but they didn't consecrate to remain in that realm. So if God asks you to anoint you, the first thing I want to do for you is that, I want to train you to get to the realm. You'll be in that realm. Once you are in that realm, who will it be the nights that wake you? You say, in Jesus' name, mountain will shake. And the mountains will shake for your sake in Jesus' name. So to pray for the power of God, you need to be sanctified. You need to be consecrated to for sanctification. You need to get yourself out of the things of the world, people of the world. That is praying for the power of God. Number two, we want to pray for salvation of souls and church growth. You know, there is something people don't understand. I told you that every drink has a special cup assigned to the drink. Am I right? When we want to pray for the salvation of souls and church growth, there is a kind of prayer you pray. We call that one corporate prayer. Let me show you in Acts of Apostles chapter 2. Acts of Apostles chapter 2. There's 40 2 to 47. Acts of Apostles, they will pray. Acts of Apostles chapter 2, verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine and fellowship, 
and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added, look at it, and the Lord added that is good to the church, church as should be saved. And the Lord acted daily to the church, so many people said. Any prayer that required the salvation of the people and the growth of the church, number one, must be a corporate prayer. The people will come together to pray in the house of God. Hello? It's not praying at home. It's not having all night at home. Pray in the house you are carrying in prayer. There was a time I gathered a few people in this place, about 30 of us who pray for 30 days in this church. That was about the second year of this ministry. You continue to pray. Listen, listen. If you want church goods, if you want the number here to multiply by any number, you tie the prayer as corporate brethren. We come together and be in the house of God, not at home. We'll be gathered here. So I was just asking God, how can these people, people do their private work, their government workers, they are saying, how can we be gathered here every time? But there is a way out. Tell somebody there is a way out. There was always an hour of prayer. You will live whatever it was you are doing. You will come over. We will be praying here. Pray day and night. Day and night. For a number of time. You know the apostles, they prayed, they tarried the upper room for 10 days. They were praying there and night. Praying there and night. Praying there and night. Until the day of Pentecost came. And the power came down upon the people. And the number of people that were, were converted that day, about 3 what? 1,000. 3,000 men. Besides women and children. The secret of salvation of souls. At the time you begin to see such things, people will run down. I give my life to Jesus. Just on their own. He said, look at that verse 47. I like that verse 47. He said, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, daily, such as you be saved. Such as because they were praying. They were in, they were praying continually. So number one, corporate prayer. In the hands of God. Number two, the show of love. The people exhibited love. They show love. You know how love acts in the sight of God. The people show love. To the extent that they sold what they had and they brought the money to the church. And the people shared together. And all that do not have. They were as if they were happy because those who have brought what they had and they shared together. That is love. The three, they were praising God. They were doing what? Praising God. So, the kind of prayer that brings down salvation upon the people and makes sure to grow is the prayer, the corporate prayer of the people in the house of God persistently and consistently. Two, for the show of love to brethren, you pray and you are showing love. Bro, have you eaten? I want you to use the breaking of fast. Oh, okay, wonderful. Oh, I have some tea and this thing here. Let's share it. The show of love. Three, praises to God. No, God is fearful in praises. You know that. Praises to God. I am telling you, something new is happening in this ministry. God wants to surprise for the people. They think we are just going at the same place and the same step. No, we are entering another step right now. Tell somebody I'm entering another step. Tell somebody I'm entering another level. And we are saved. That for people to be saved and for church to grow. 
we must engage corporate prayer in the hands of God. Persistently, consistently. Two, we must show love among the brethren. Three, we must praise God. And as we do that, the Lord will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three kind of prayer. When we are praying for a major project, listen very well. Maybe you want to build a, 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 a church house. Or you want to build a story building. You want to build a mansion. There's a kind of prayer that is required. You have a project that is so gigantic. Unimaginably gigantic. You can't just, it's not a project you can handle yourself. It's a kind of prayer that is required. Let's look at Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, we are reading verse 28 to 30. Are you with me? Luke chapter 14, verse 28. For which of you intended to build a tower, sit that not down first and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, less happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that, behold it, begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was unable to finish. <laughs> that is not your portion in Jesus' name. Look up very well. I know that a lot of people misinterpret this scripture. Of course, I don't call it a misinterpretation because every scripture I told you before has a primary interpretation, secondary interpretation, tertiary interpretation, as much as you can by the Spirit of God. When they say, which of you will want to be the tour and will not first count the cost? They are thinking of money. It's not talking about money. No, 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 no. Your bank account. It's not talking about bank account. It's not talking about how much you have. It's talking about one, your faith level. Two, your vision. Three, your stamina. I will explain. Listen very well. If you are praying for a major project, I'm not talking about the project that you can handle. You might have money to handle a prayer house, can have some 10 million to build a, a bungalow. But if you have 10 million and the tower, the tower, the meaning of the tower is something very big. And the tower on the mountainous project you have is one to hundreds of million and you have just 10 million. Number one, you have to count the fit that is required for building that tower. The kind of faith. You know, we, I was transferred to a church in those days. And then, when I got to that church, I made the declaration. I think I was transferred in another June or July. I told them that by October, we are going to go to our own house, church house. We were not more than six people. The six was that the person assisting me was having about three, four, five children. I mean, I don't know. You can imagine what I mean. That if you want to be in the tour, you must count the cost. And in that place, I went to the river bank. You know the place, the Ibrabo? You know Ibrabo? I went to the river bank and I saw some door. That is pyramid of sand. If you look to the other side of it, the head, there used to be a mountain of sand there. God took me there and I look at it. I said, wow, that was all. God does not speak more than that. He has spoken volume to me. He didn't speak any one word, but he made me to behold the sand. I came and I said, yes. I said, we can have the sand beach. The church can have a sandwich. But they told me that the community don't give sandwich to any division that is not a member of the community. I said, I'm breaking that yoke. I went to the chairman of the community. They said, Pastor, we are giving it to you. And we had a sandwich. We mobilized people. They said, they're digging sand from the river. You understand what I mean? Sand. We were selling sand for people in those legacy, and they would come and buy from us. We started money block. 
We have not gotten a land. We don't have the money to buy a land. Did you hear what I'm saying? But one of our members, father's house was very close to the river. And the copper was very large. I said, we are going to most block in this place. Anywhere we get land in this community, we will transfer the block to the place of build. We started money. Just I told one young man in my village, I needed 40 bags of cement. I'll pay you instrumentally. We started molding blocks. As we finished molding, money was coming, blocks were coming, cement were coming. We started molding blocks. By June, July, August, we molded blocks at the solution to a little level. The first thing you need, what must count, is your level of faith. We molded the blocks. So, we're not thinking of land. How do we get land? We started searching. One man wanted to sell land for us. The land was so big, it's more than one plot. The amount of call was very huge. We said, We are going to give you half of it first. It's they are great. We mobilize and we'll give you half. Let me tell you one thing. At that time, there was one youth copper that came from Beno State. Hello? A youth copper that came from Beno State, his name is Wendy. Benjamin Alpha. One day, Benjamin Alpha. We still communicate it today. It's in Benoist State. Not that that one was coming for you service. He told God, you want to encounter a person that can improve his prayer life and faith life. And what the young man saw me, he said, this is what he wants. Ten. And around 10 o'clock in the night, when we are doing crusade in Olo here, and we enter my vehicle, so I will finish. I drive to Ibrahim. For all night with him. I'm telling you, the cost is faith and what you will do with the faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I will drive down to Ibrahim in the night around 10 o'clock. Sometimes my wife will say, ah, This night, this night, I said, If you knew the number of angels in the car with me, you will not be afraid that I'm driving in the night. We go there for all night. You will count the cost whether you have enough. Enough stamina, enough grace, enough vision, enough faith. That is what you need. It's not cash. As soon as we finish that, we go into fasting. And the last two, three, four people say, wait for me in the church. We are coming for fasting the following day. Two, three days. Fasting, we are commercial. Eventually, we had a land. Eventually, we started a foundation. But let me tell you something about to our beauty. The Bible said, who will not count the cost if you want to be the Torah? A Torah is a very high beauty. Are you hearing me? A Torah is a very high beauty. Are you hearing me now? The meaning is this. As you progress from this stage to this stage, your faith must increase. Hello? Are you hearing me? As you are moving in the course of building that Torah, your faith level must increase. Your vision must increase. Your stamina must increase. I know some of you will not understand what I'm saying. But when we talk about stamina, we are talking about the spirit of continuity. How frequent, how untired you can become when you are doing something. something when you are easily tired, you have no stamina. You might have the skill, but you needed to add stamina to your skill in order for you to succeed. When you are praying and you are not consistent, it means you have no stamina of prayers. Do you know that when we got to a little level, Satan said we can't go beyond that. And the speed at which we were going, the speed crashed. The speed slowed down. Was say God, why? What is happening? Not knowing that I needed to increase my faith, my stamina, my vision. But because I have made a declaration that by October we are packing in, we cut palm fronts, brick by bone. I will put palm front at the top. I will start worship there from October. Can I say amen? Until the Spirit of God spoke to me that more powers from the kingdom of darkness 
have been angry and their leader has questioned them. Now, why did they leave this young man to complete the building? And by the time we got to little level, I pray for the prayer I did, nothing happened. For more than one year, we remain at little level. But I don't put pamphlets in the dead with pamphlets. Until I knew that I need to increase faith stamina. Not with the same faith. Building tower, you must grow. And you must pray at every stage. I remember a time when bricklayers were walking. The bricklayers were walking, they were money, not blood. Me and this copper will be in the forest. Will be capacity. Oh God. Oh God. I will be praying. You must count the costs. At the time, the people were working there. And there was no money to pay the workers. I prayed. And that morning, I took the key of my car. As I was about to open the car, a friend of mine came in. Blessed Brennan. He handed an envelope to me. He said he want to pay his tithe into my church. That's how he's led to do. When I counted the money, it was exactly the amount that was used to pay the workers there. Satan is trying to rubbish me. Let me come, cut farm fronts, bring bamboo. That one will not cost me any money. I'll put it on top of it. If you want to be in the Torah, as described by the Bible, have your faith, have the vision, have the stamina, have the strength. You need strength. He said, be strong and courageous. You need strength. And no problem with that. There was no stage at which we were in that building that we stopped praying. We prayed practically at every stage. We prayed when they were holding blocks. We prayed when we were looking for a land to buy. You can imagine by September, by September, first week of September, we have not got no land though. But we have gone all the blocks. We have gone all the land. We were praying, God, we need a land. God, we Until the person allowed us to begin to build, even until we finish paying the land. I didn't know. You need stamina for such prayers. Stamina for such prayers. If not for time, I want to give you the type for financial breakthrough. Oh, somebody will say, Pastor, but you are not rich. I am very rich as I say here. Are you away? You are not away. I am very rich. You know, because I believe that before you preach riches, you must be rich. Two of us. Am I right? You know, this man of God was uh, preaching in a place and he said that uh, he's a rich man. So he was preaching about riches. When the man exploded, the man is a very popular minister, you know. The rich you get almost two aeroplanes as you are talking about. When the later he became rich, he told his mother, at that time I was preaching, I was pregnant with the riches. So you hear what I'm saying, man? Yes, so don't ask me question whether I'm rich. Tell somebody my pastor is pregnant with riches. Tell somebody your pastor is pregnant with riches. You, you the jealous piece, I am Irish. Rise up, let us pray. Rise up, let us pray. Rise up. Rise up. Oh God, in heaven, I want you to talk to God in prayer. Talk to God in prayer. Open your mouth. It means consecration to pray for God's power. Let no one deceive you. You need consecrate. To consecrate. Not to Jesus, man, but pray. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, keep me holy. Make me holy. Come here, mother, bring yourself. Lord Jesus, make me holy. Make me holy. Lord Jesus, make me holy. Make me holy. Make me holy. Make me holy. I pray for the name of Jesus. Give me holy, give me holy. Give me holy, God. I pray for you. Say, Lord Jesus, 
say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I need a gift from the Spirit. Use that child. I will explain later. Look up the dreams. Oh God, they from the time and step. We take the next level. Let the fire of God come down and prepare His people Lord, for this great time that is coming. Amen. Anything that needed to be removed from your life, from my life, between now and Saturday, may God grant it to go away in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace to prepare come upon you. Amen. The power to prepare come upon you. Amen. The grace to be holy come upon you. Amen. The grace to be consecrated come upon you. Amen. Be sanctified. Amen. Wash your clothes. Amen. And let you set bounds between you and your activities in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, today is a special day. Amen. Even as from this moment, let the people be given for secrets. Amen. I will be a great day. Amen. Father, thank you for prayer and answer. Amen. Come back everyone here with the Lord. Oh, and even our brethren that will be here on Tuesday, Lord God, who will hear this announcement, I pray, I cover them with the Lord of Jesus. Father, oh, thank you for prayer and answer. Jesus. Jesus, name we pray. Amen. I believe you are blessed. And if you are still in doubt as to whether you are saved, then pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I surrender totally to you today. Grant me the opportunity never to go back to the word of sin. Forgive me, Lord, and write my name in the Lord's book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.